Hello everyone, let me just give everyone a few more seconds to go ahead and log in and we'll go ahead and get started. <clears throat> All right, hello everyone, this is Dee London and welcome to the Trimble Business Center Power Hour where we talk about all things TBC and TBC related. Today, we'll be discussing the worksite mapping and analytics of a solution that is integratable with TBC, Trimble Stratus. We do have all attendees in listen-only mode, but we welcome all questions and comments, so feel free to type them into the Q&A tab at the bottom of your screen, and we'll respond accordingly. But first off, I just want to sincerely thank everyone for spending their time with us today. There are many things you could be doing, but we are happy to host you for the next hour or so and provide some beneficial information that will be valuable to you and your teams going forward. With us today, we have Nick Viferic, our CEC Software Regional Sales Specialist, Cameron Bentley, our Trimble Stratus Solutions Engineer, and Justin Greenwald, our Trimble Stratus Regional Sales Manager. And during today's webinar, our team will be demonstrating Trimble Stratus and showing how to streamline your workflows by closing the information gap between you and your sites. I would like to welcome Justin Greenwald, who will be taking us further through the process. Justin, thank you for joining us today. Absolutely, Delendum. Thank you for the introduction. And hello, everyone. So for those of you that are new to Trimble Stratus, what Trimble Stratus is, is it's a, a web-based worksite management platform that not only is the automated processing engine for all of your aerial survey, so all of your aerial surveys, but as well as any surface information that's in line work that's been generated in TBC and enables anyone that would need to collaborate on the job site, the ability to, to log in and have the most recent um, and latest and greatest access to how their existing conditions are matching up with where the project would need to go. So a couple of things that uh, the Trimble Stratus enables our, our customers to do is, first and foremost, offload some of the, the heavy lifting involved with processing aerial survey data. Secondly, it, by being the web-based platform and repository for all of that information from original ground all the way through to as built, as well as any grading or, or surface plans, it enables you to then measure yourself against you know, survey over survey from where you've been to where you're going, as well as to do takeoffs to see where you're going and enables kind of that shared source of truth for all of the collaborators on the project. So anyone that would need access to that information can have it with just a few clicks of the button. Also, any of those photogrammetrical outputs would automatically flow into TBC and into Trimble so that you're not having to download extremely large point cloud or surface files. That's something that can automatically be integrated into the, the TBC or Trimble ecosystem for, for planning and for modeling. So with this web-based tool, really what we've we've answered the or we've built the tool to answer these questions. So by having that repository for all of your surface information, you can answer you know, how much work has been done from your original ground survey to your progress topo. And then from there to your take to your uh, final grade or, or rough grade surfaces to understand a takeoff or how much more, more work needs to be done and where material would need to move across the site or across the project. From there, everything is times and date stamped so we can understand, you know, how that material is, is stacking up with what estimates or what, uh, what a Gantt chart or calendar would say for when the project or how the project is progressing and, and what uh, productivity is happening. And then Ultimately, by having all the, the line work and surface information loaded in, comparing against our, our aerial surveys, what you can do is understand how the, how the work is being done and if it's done in the right location. So are we grading in the right place? Are we, and most, most importantly, are we moving dirt once? Uh, we have a customer that likes, uh, one of our oldest customers likes to say, if we move dirt once, we get to, we're making money. If we move it twice, we're breaking even. And if we move it third time, we're, 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 losing, we're losing our rears. So ultimately protects against, um, I guess protects against unnecessary inefficiencies on the projects, settles disputes, and ensures that you're, you're making money or you're, you're moving the dirt that you're contracted to move on the project. So when it comes to the, when it comes to the aerial surveys, um, 
of course, we can get into this a little bit deeper, but essentially this is the, the basics for capturing an aerial topo. So first things first, we want to lay ground control within the coordinate system that we would like our site to project in. So one of the things with Trimble Stratus is we can accommodate a local or a site coordinate system as well as a state plane or a UTM. Uh, from there, we would establish the ground control and then we'd execute the, the drone mission. So this is a uh, no purer form of an autonomous vehicle than a drone. Pre-flight, pre you'd program where that, where that drone would fly, how high, and where the images would be taken, and you hit start. Once the drone is, has completed the mission, essentially we're uploading that data to the Trimble Stratus platform, just via a drag and drop from the SD card. From there, we'd upload ground control along with that, but once that data hits the Trimble Stratus processing engines, our team then performs the QA and QC elements on that process and all the collaborators within that project get an email notification when the, the, the most recent survey has been completed so that they can go in and make those uh, volumetric or is, is essentially interrogate and, and make analysis against that data. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll kick it over to uh, to Cam to sort of drive through a, a few of the, the sites and projects and, and show how in real life uh, the tool is is working to answer those questions on a project. All right, Cam. Right before we uh, switch it over to Cam, I threw up a quick uh, poll. If you guys just answer that, we'll get her going. Give it 10 more seconds. Okay. Closing the poll and cam. Let's see here. It is all you, buddy. Perfect. Yeah, so what I'll do today is I'll run through a quick site setup process. Once we get in the tool, we'll run through a quick data upload, and then we'll get to the fun stuff with the data analysis and measurement tools once we have your data processed in the tool. So just to run through the tool very quickly, Trimble Stat Stratus, as Justin said, is a web-based tool. Um, so all you need is an internet connection to access all this information, make your measurements, and ultimately share that across the business. For our customers, what it looks like is they'll have a repository of their sites over here on the left, and they'll have a corresponding map on the right with those pins of those project locations. So it'll become your surface repository and your, uh, your command center for everything that has to do with your survey information for your jobs. So when we come to upload the data to the site, what we first want to do is create a site to upload that data to. So I'll just run through a test here. You can name your site however you want, whatever your internal nomenclature may be. And then this section here is more for our information just to, to see what customer, what sorts of sites our customers are using. So I'll stick to construction for here. Go ahead and click next. And the next, I'm just gonna pick the location of my project. So this one that we're gonna upload is outside uh, Sun Prairie, Wisconsin. Just wanna zoom into that specific location of the site. And what this is gonna be useful for is in the next step where we're actually setting the coordinate system of your site. This is probably the most important section of this process is to make sure that we're only setting up the site once and we're setting it up in the correct system so that all of our outputs for all of your surveys for the site will be spit out in the same system. On that front, we can, pub we can set up a site in any published system you may be working in, whether it's a state plane or a UTM zone, as well as any local system if you've set up a calibration or anything like that. This one in particular is set up in a local system via a JXL. Um, just to run through what that looks like for our customers, typically we just want to see a, a .dc or a .cal in Trimble Business Center. And then I'll switch over to Business Center here. Ultimately, the JXL or Job XML that we're after is a survey export from TBC. Once we get that JXL, what we can do is jump back to Stratus and then drag and drop that file into, into Stratus. So I have a folder here with my calibration. And I'll drag and drop that in. And then what we get is all the parameters from your DC or calibration. And then all of our outputs for the site will be processed according to your project parameters. So now that that's set up, I'll go ahead and click next. And this is where we can actually invite people to your site. 
So whether you want specific project managers or superintendents or whoever it may be, you can give them access. And because it's web-based, you can give them anything from view only access all the way to a manage access for administrator type permissions. I'll actually, for the, for the purpose of this demo, I'll skip this for now and we can jump straight into an upload uh, process. So first and foremost, once you have all these sites set up in your portal, we just wanna make sure that we're uploading the data to the correct site. So I'll choose that one that I just set up. And then as far as what types of data you can submit into the platform, there's a variety of options you have. Um, so we can, our customers can upload point cloud data. We can take historical aerial survey data. Um, and then for, for this purpose, we'll upload survey data, which we just need geotag JPEGs from the drone and any ground control information you may have. So again, just a couple step process and it starts by dragging and dropping those images from uh, the drone. So I have that folder here and I'll drag those in. This is a relatively small flight, about 250 images. But what you'll see is immediately the, the mission plan, so to speak, over here on the right. And each of these dots represent the specific locations that the drone took an image. So it's kind of your first chance to check to make sure that your mission covered the area that you needed to see. And then ultimately your outputs are gonna be representative of your project. Our system's also gonna run a series of simple file validations to make sure that the data come in, coming in satisfies some requirements that we may have to make sure that we can produce good data from that. All green is all good. So from there, we can go ahead and click next. This is just naming the data set here. Um, typically our customers will name via dates so that when we do those comparisons that Justin was talking about survey to survey or survey to design, you can understand which, where in the context of that site that, that survey was from. The next step is the ground control. Um, so for our customers, we are a drone agnostic platform in that we can, we're not, we don't care which types of drones you up, upload data to us from, um, as well as ground control. So we can, we have our own arrow point solutions, which are smart ground control points. Um, some of you may be familiar with, as well as traditional control points that you may have established on site. You can upload either. And then we also have the ability to take ground control and checkpoints as well. So in this case, this, this data set I have was flown with our arrow points. And then again, we see the, the local, local grid uh, information for the coordinate system we'll be processing in. So because this was an arrow point survey, I'm just gonna simply search for the arrow point survey that corresponds to this flight. That's this one here. We had four ground control points for this flight. And then how we process arrow points really varies depending on how you're set up uh, the site initially. Um, if it's in a state plane or UTM zone or any published system, we have a variety of different methods to process that information. One being our corrections network. We have a corrections network that allows our customers to tap into a, a variety of different correction sources to obtain their corrections for these ground control and the aerial survey processing. Since this is a local site, we'll use our local, local site survey benchmark. What this requires is selecting one of our arrow points as our known point. And that's gonna help us in put projecting and processing all this information into the, the project coordinates. So in this case, I happen to know that point four was my known point. And what we're gonna do is just specify some information as well as provide the northern, easting, and Z value for that. So first and foremost, we wanna see where this was measured to, whether it was shot in uh, with the rover with that calibration on it, or uh, a permanent control point established on the ground um, from which we want to account, or basically account for the thickness of the ground control pad. So in this case, we top of the arrow point. We want this in US survey feet. And then I have some of those, I have that known point information here, which I'll just copy over quickly. And again, this known point process is really only for our customers who are using local systems. Um, if you are in a state plane system, it's probably a, even a more straightforward process. Just involves throwing out the arrow point and then being able to process into that, automatically transform that information into the state plane. So now we can see the full context of our mission. We can see all 250 image locations as well as our four ground control points and our known point here in the green. One thing that we can allow our customers to do is actually toggle between using some of these arrow points as ground control points and some as checkpoints. So if I wanted to turn some of these as independent checkpoints, I can just tick toggle that button. And now those points will not be used to build the model itself, rather check the accuracy of the model after the, after the processing is complete. So here I have a ground control point here, ground control point here, 
my known point also serving as a ground control point and a single checkpoint up here in the top. From there, we'll click next. And this is more getting the outputs from the processing. The first being selecting a filter that you want to apply to the model. Um, we, can, we have a couple of different filters that our customers can choose from. The lightest being an equipment filter that will do a really good job of filtering out any equipment you may have on site, um, whether it's a, a grading equipment, just general trucks or uh, other vehicles on site, all the way through light vegetation to a bare, bare earth type filter here on the right. So for this one, I'll stick to equipment. Um, and then we actually have another process to do some further filtering after processing is done with an in-browser tool. And then here in the outputs, we have basically what you can uh, want back from the processing. So we'll see files over here on the left that will be available in the viewer itself. And then these downloadable file outputs that we'll produce. Every time you process through Trimble Stratus, um, you'll get around 15 to 20 different file types from 3D surfaces to digital elevation models, ortho photos, point clouds, et cetera. And you have the option to generate a TTM um, from which to download and send directly to Trimble, the Trimble ecosystem. And that's, that's pretty much the process. This final summary stage is really just a sanity check to make sure that I have all the files that I uploaded. I have my ground control points. I'm processing it in my local site grid and ultimately making sure I'm getting what I want back from this, um, this processing. Once I press submit, that goes to our team of photogrammetrists and GIS specialists who will run and manage all the QA, QC behind the processing. Um, so really what it looks like at a high level is our customers perform the data collection, come to our platform to upload the data, and then it gets sent to our team of specialists to do the heavy lifting and do the photographical processing. And then within 24 hours or less, our customers will get a surface to run their comparisons, to measure what's on the ground, and really answer the questions they need for their projects. So with that, I'll go ahead and jump into a site here, and we can jump into those analysis and measurement tools. Um, I have a residential subdivision build that has a couple different data sets and designs. So it'll run through some of those workflows that we're looking for. So after the processing is complete, obviously the first and foremost, what we get is a, an accurate 3D model of your site. So because it's web-based, you can come in here, assuming you have the right permissions, come in here, play around with the model, and then ultimately start making your measurements to make sure that, hey, how do I compare to what I put my survey last month or last week? And then what do I need to do to reach my subgrade model or final grade model that I've imported? So like I said, in this project, we can come and see the number of data sets that we have available, as well as designs in this project. So this customer has flown from the original ground. We have several progress topos here in the middle, and then we have more or less an as-built come February 28, 2020. We also have some design services. So you can import any design services you want, whether it's a TTM or a DXF, as well as any line work that may have boundaries, utilities, et cetera, kind of whatever you're looking um, for this project. Really where that comes together is here in this timeline tool. It's more or less just a historical timeline of your site from the beginning of the job throughout uh, managing your progress, seeing how you've progressed, um, and seeing where the work is being done on site. So first and foremost, here we have a, a, just an original ground survey. This is the first flight that we did for this project. It's a really useful tool just to verify and validate the existing conditions of the site. Because you can import designs, you can bring in any contours or engineer topos that you had during the bidding process and verify the existing conditions of the site before you break ground. That way, if you catch a bust or you see anything off from what you were expecting on the site, you have both the visuals in, in the form of the pictures and the ortho photo, as well as the quantities compared to that, those contours and the, the existing conditions to go have that tough conversation with an owner if you have to. And then throughout the job, we have our progress topos just to audit and, and validate all the work that either you or you have a subcontractor doing on your behalf. And then all the way, like I said, through more or less an as-built on the, on the tail end of a project. So I'll stick to this January 24th where more of the earthwork is being done. And now we can jump into the, the, the surface and run some comparisons, measure stockpiles, run cross-sections, and then ultimately share and export that information into a report. On the designs front, like I said, we can import designs. So here we have a final grade model that we'll compare to. It's your standard triangulated mesh surface, again, representative of that final grade model. You can import unlimited number of designs. So as you, you kind of iterate and create and update your designs, you can import those on, an, on a 
weekly basis, whatever it may be. Um, as long as you have the information you need in the platform, you can make those comparisons. So we can see how the existing conditions compare to this design. Um, obviously, these areas in the red are where the surface is protruding through that design representative of areas of cut. And then we can import line work as well. So here for a residential subdivision, we have lot lines, we have boundary lines, as well as some utilities. So you can quickly and easily validate where things are being built, if they're being built in the right spot. And then we can actually use this line work to make our measurements as well. So if you wanted to pull a, a road center line and make a cross section, we could do that. If we wanted to run a cut fill or a take off for the entire project boundary, we can do that as well. So what I'll do first is just select that project boundary here for this subdivision, and I'll convert that to a measurement. And what I want to do first is just to see what we've done over the last, um, the last month or so to see what my guys in the field have done and where we compare to where we were last month. So what I'll do is turn off those line work. Now I have my measurement boundary here. And to do those comparisons, what I'll do is we're comparing to a previous survey based on that template that I selected. And then what we're going to do is just specify which survey I want to compare against. So in this case, like I said, we want to look about a month prior. So we can say, what have I done since December 18th to January 24th? And then we can run, run that volumetric. As you see, that heat map generates very quickly in the measurement boundary. And then our, our volumetrics over here on the left for the cut and fill will show up um, right here. So we have a little over 29,000 yards of cut that we performed in that month's time. Uh, we brought in a little over 55,000 yards of material. So we had a net import of about 26,200 yards um, in that month's time. And obviously we see the heat map here. We see the areas of cut being represented in fill, areas of fill, or sorry, the areas of red are cut, areas of blue are fill. And then what you can do is actually hover your mouse in any specific area and do an elevation or grade check um, across this measurement. So we can see in that month's time, we filled about 0.8 feet here. I go to an area of red, we can see exactly how much material we cut. And all of that can be dictated by these heat map settings below here. You can change your colors, you can change your tolerances. Um, typically we're working within that 10th of a foot, two to three centimeters. Um, so that's what we see here in the measurement. And now if we wanted to look forward to a design to see, I know what I've done in the last month, now what do I need to do in order to reach that design? What we can do is then just change the surface that we want to compare to. So instead of a survey, I'll come to my designs and that final grade surface that we just looked at, I'll come and choose that here. And now we're running a surface to surface comparison between that design and we'll see what's left to do on the job until we can move on to our next. So again, very similar. Um, in this case, we have about 35,000 yards of cut a little under 45,000 yards of fill. So again, a net import in order to finish the job, um, a little over 9,800 yards. And now because we're comparing to a design, if we zoom in, anywhere that we see would be clear, like this area here, that would be what we would consider on grade compared to that design within that tenth of a foot, um, plus or minus a tenth of either cut or fill. So saves a lot of time instead of having to go out in the field and do your grade checks with a basin rover. Now we can go out and from the comfort of your desk, just move your mouse and see how you compare to your design based on your latest flight. And all this really comes back to the cadence in which you're capturing this data, whether it's weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, having all this data just helps you kind of keep a keener eye on the site, what the quantities look like um, and where you need to maybe refocus some efforts in order to finish the job um, faster. So all of that was based on that, that measurement that I created from our line work. We have our measurement tools here on the top. We have a point line and polygon tool. Um, so under each of these, we have templates that we've created hand in hand with our customers to measure what they need to see on the project. So the point tool is gonna be giving you a specific coordinate of any location on site, any object on site. Um, so we we'll, can drop a point of interest, maybe on some piping here. We can drop that. We'll get specific coordinates. You can add a text box. Um, and you can name it whatever you want. The line tool is going to be more measuring distances, elevations. We can do cross sections and even slope angles. Um, so for this case, I'll show you what a cross section may look like. If you wanted to come into an area on site, I'll come in on these group of lots here. If we wanted to run this across these lots, we can just click a starting point, click an ending point, and then we'll get a profile view of the existing conditions 
from this January 24th flight. So we'll go ahead and rotate that and we can see it both in the model and down here in, in the profile view. So that yellow would be this the surface of the January 24th flight and that dotted line is that final grade model that we're building to. So as you move your mouse here, you can compare the two and you can see exactly the elevation difference between those two surfaces. Obviously in this area, we have to cut um, right around seven tenths in order to reach that design. And you can zoom in and play around to get a better idea of what that looks like. And going back to having all this information in one site, you can actually add more contextual information in the form of other surveys. So if I wanted to pull in that same December 18th survey, we get an idea of where we were a month ago in December 18th there in the purple, the yellow being the January 24th, and again, that dotted line so we can see where we were, where we are, and where we need to be all within one cross section. And with any measurement in the tool, um, obviously being able to see it and share it within the platform is great. Um, for those uh, heavy TBC users, one thing that we can do is actually export any of these measurements. So we can export this and, and send it directly to Trimble Business Center um, for you able to look at all of these cross sections within, within your project in, in TBC. And then finally, the Polygon tool, we touched on it a little bit already. Um, we have the, the surface to surface comparisons that we can run. Um, we can also do stockpiles and surface areas um, and just measuring general volumes of the material that you have on the ground. We wanted to measure a stockpile. We can come that down to this one here. Just rotate a little bit. Come back to the Polygon tool and choose my stockpile template. And it's just a really easy way to get a volume and then we can actually add material properties to understand both the tonnage and dollar figure tied to this stockpile as well. So just click around the toe of the stockpile. We'll get the volume very quickly. You can see we're right around 460 yards. You can view this in either 2D or 3D, but you get an idea of what that stockpile looks like and the volume associated with it. And the volume is really only half the battle. So we have 460 yards, really where we can track better what we have on the ground and whether we're getting, whether it's being imported or you need to export from material off the job, you can add these material properties to help build those costs into the job. So for any site that you create in the portal, we can import a list of materials that you may have or expect to have on the site, whether it's topsoil or sand or half inch crush, whatever it may be, your base for your roads. Um, you can come in here and add the name of that material, an ID that may correspond to accounting, as well as a density and dollar figure. So those densities and dollar figures is what we're gonna use in tandem with the volume to calculate those tonnages. So if we say, let's say this is topsoil, Based on those figures in the chart, we can then get a tonnage. So we have about 460 yards here at the top in volume. We have 552 tons, and that's worth about 5,500 bucks. So if you can kind of extrapolate that for all the stockpiles you may have on your sites, um, it's a really quick way to do, do a quick inventory, understand the volumes and tonnages. Do I have enough to finish the job? Do I have enough for my retention pond or my sub base for your road? Um, and answer those sorts of questions as well. And one thing to touch on here is that obviously a big part of what we're doing is the processing of all this information. And like I said, part of that in that upload process is choosing the outputs you want back. So everything we've done here is in the context of the ortho photo and the elevation model that we have. If we click on this file tab at the top, this is where we can access those files that you've, you've chosen to receive back, um, whether that's a DXF surface, an ortho photo, the point cloud, um, we'll produce all of those. So we have a couple of different densities of a DXF surface. You can download to your machine or send directly to the Trimble uh, environment. Ortho photos and geo tips and JPEGs. Point clouds, reduced in full density, all in the coordinate system and local grid that we specified. We have shape file uh, in, for contours. We have one and two foot intervals for our contours. And then in the terrain, we have DTM and DSMs um, for the entire survey. So just by flying the drone and capturing the existing conditions of your flight, you'll get really quick and accurate orthos that you can then send to the Trimble environment and use in tandem with everything else that you're doing in TDC, um, while also maintaining the ability to do some quick analysis and interrogation of the data within the platform itself. So now that we came and made a handful of these measurements, what I'll do is actually just turn some of these on. So I have a comparative final grade, 
I have my monthly quantities. Let's turn on a cross section. Um, and then we can turn on that stockpile as well. Any measurement that we have turned on over here in the left, we can then include on a report. So if you want to share this information, obviously that's a big component of a web-based platform um, as well as creating these reports. So in this report tab, we can generate either a PDF or a CSV report. Go ahead and generate a PDF report. What this is going to do is have information for um, all of those measurements that I just ticked on. So for those cut fills, it'll have information on um, the quantities behind it all, as well as a gridded heat map for um, where those, that cut and fill looks like. Um, for the stockpile, we'll have material information as well as those tonnages and dollar figures. And then for that cross-section, we'll see a, um, a landscape view of what that cross-section looks like. So download it quickly there, and this is what that report looks like. So we can run through it, what it looks like here. We'll get information for the site, the dates, who generated it, um, and then we'll get a kind of a table of contents of all those measurements included within the report. So we can see our our quantity, our comparative surface measurements there in the red, our cross section and stockpile, and then we'll get our quantities here to understand what that looks like. And then we'll jump a little bit more granularly into each of those. So we have the comparative final grade and our quantities associated in order to reach that final grade based on the conditions of our January 24th flight. And then we'll get a gridded heat map of what that looks like. So you can see the respective cutter fill in all these locations um, compared to that final grade model. Same for the monthly quantities. So just a really quick way to report and share all this information. And one thing to touch on is I kind of like to call this a smart PDF. It has links that will bring you directly back into this data set with these measurements turned on if you were to click this link. So going back to the fact that it is web-based, if you wanted to check out, um, let's say, a takeoff or a cross-section like we see here, you could click this link and it would bring you back to that data set with this measurement turned on so you could check it out for yourself. And if you had to have a conversation with a colleague, you know you're talking apples to apples, seeing the same measurement on both of your screens. So within the tool, there's a lot of different information we can extract and kind of interrogate via the different tools. Um, another thing that we can do is um, just in the survey tab, we have a couple different layers. This is the other half of those outputs. Um, in addition to the, the, the files that we generate, you can also tick on an elevation or a gradient map, as well as contours and visualize what that looks like. So if you wanna see what potential drainage could look like or anything else, you can visualize this elevation map, change your colors, change your, your tolerances, um, and see what that may look like. You can take on a similar map for the gradient and understand what that looks like, all customizable. And then more popular than that is just the contours where you can adjust the minor major contours to see what you wanna see on the site. You can change it from white to black. So just another representation of that existing conditions from this part. So above all else, it really is just meant to become a surface repository for any of your projects that you may be flying a drone and capturing this data on. Um, for those who are not flying drones yet, um, this is kind of the next wave. It's been around for a handful of years, and we now reach the technology where we're, we're getting survey grade information from the drone, where we can create these surfaces um, within that tenth of a foot, um, both horizontally and, and vertically. Um, so it's a really quick and easy way to capture the existing conditions at the site, see where you're at, see what you've done, and then ultimately having that platform to share the information. So I think from there, what I'll do is I'll turn it back over to Justin um, and we can um, open up for some Q&A after that. Uh, yeah, sure. Before we uh, get into that, we had a couple of questions um, that came across and I thought I would launch a quick poll. So I'm going to launch this poll and then I'm going to ask some questions to you. Um, when you were put, uh, importing in the data itself, a question came across. Uh, you said that you had to put the data in as easting, northing, and elevation. Can you adjust that to northing, easting, and elevation just, just based off the habits of um, our users out there currently they deal with north north northing easting and elevation reports is this possible with this software yes absolutely 
yeah, we obviously work with customers around the world. So the way they, and they read those are differently. Um, and that would be in the site setup process. You can view how that looks. Um, so we actually have this uh, here. We can do northing easting Z value or easting northing Z value, depending on how you prefer to see that. Awesome. And then the other question that came in, um, if you have a Phantom 4 RTK uh, drone data to process, like was presented, do you need to buy the data processing uh, from Propeller? I'm assuming they're talking about the Aeropoint, um, the Aeropoint post-processing system of it. Got it. So with the with the PPK bundle, it, it, it is the Phantom 4 RTK in tandem with our arrow points. Um, and the reason behind that is that we can correct both the geotags from the drone itself as well as the ground control information from the arrow point. And we can correct um, all of that information in the PPK processing that we're doing. So that is our PPK processing. With, if, if you have the Phantom 4 RTK, you can certainly shoot in traditional ground control points and we can use those um, to process that information, but it wouldn't be within the boundaries of our uh, "Quote unquote PPK processing." Uh, I appreciate Nick, were there any other questions there? I think I might have lost your audio no, that's a little bit. Yeah, I, yeah, I just kind of bleeped out on you guys for a second. No, yeah. no, that's all. Uh, Justin, it is, is all yours. Hold on, let me try this one more time. Are you present? Oh, yeah, okay, you got it. Perfect. Yeah, I think that we've got it. So, um, yeah, just as um, as Kim as Cameron was was mentioning, um, we see customers that come to Trimble Stratus, whether they're completely brand new to aerial surveys or drone surveys, or folks that have you know, very well established um, and mature drone programs, but are looking for a way to alleviate the bottleneck of processing data and sort of, you know, sort of get more out of the program and scale that upwards. So um, in that, that instance, for folks who have been flying to get quantities, whether that's on stockpiles or just develop contours or even for pretty pictures, what we can do is is move historical information into the Trimble Stratus um, platform. So the same way that Cameron was uploading the images and going through that processing, we can move in kind of pre-processed data and point clouds into the platform so that you've got that information to make measurements off of and so that you're not necessarily missing a beat on a, on a longer term type project. And that's something that we're very well across on how to do both ourselves, uh, the Trimble Stratus team on our, our success team, as well as SciTech. Um, we work together with, with all of our customers to kind of, uh, I guess, best find a path forward to, um, to see what works best. And then those who are, who are new to the drone surveying platform, it's, it's just a, uh, you know, a few extra um, calls with our, with our customer success team to identify a particular project or set of projects and coach you up on really kind of the best practices for setting up the the drone and um, and ground control and so that we begin with the end in mind knowing what you know what type of accuracies we're looking to find and and then you know kind of coaching coaching you through on how to execute that mission and again just you know working alongside our, our partners in SciTech and finding the, the right plan that works for the right customer and project. So Nick, I think from here, this is sort of where um, I'd kind of let you kind of take over and wrap things up. Yep, yep, indeed. Um, before we uh, do that, a couple more questions came in um, that I missed. Can you import a surface file as an as-built file? Sometimes you might want to create an, an as-built layer from point clouds and traditional GPS total station data. 
Yep. So, and in, in the in the platform, um, in that designs tab, um, we can import a number of different files. So, if we can get that in a DXF format, that's typically how most customers will will import that information. Um, we can also import directly TTMs um, and KML KMZs as well. Um, awesome. Is there? Um, do you require ground control points for stockpile volumes? Nope. Nope. Um, uh, we, it really depends on the customer's operation. Um, if they're just concerned about relative accuracy um, as far as the, that specific flight itself, just to get those volumes, um, you don't need ground control for that. Um, it really would just depend on if you're tracking stockpiles survey over survey, that's when you'd want to have those tie points down to tie it down globally so that when you compare it next month, things will line up apples to apples. Awesome. And then going back to the question about um, if they, um, the data processing from a propeller, if you get the RTK and AeroPoint system, do you need to buy the processing as well? No. Nope. Perfect. It doesn't have to be processed in Trimble Stratus. You'll you'll just apply the, the geotags in another solution and, and process the data. Perfect. Okay, I believe we've ticked all of the questions at this point. So I'll just close this out. Uh, do this. Come on. There we go. Okay. And hide this. Okay, guys. Can you guys see my screen? So our resources that we have here, uh, some Trimble Stratus re, uh, resources for you guys to go to. You, uh, you can go through uh, construction.trimble.com under the products to, to get some information as well as going to www.propellerarrow.com slash trimble dash stratus. Um, or you can go to um, on the construction site for trimble construction.com uh, trimble.com uh, slash where to buy. Uh, additional information about videos can be found on these web pages um, that can go over anywhere from demo videos to uh, integration to uh, PPK information and such like that. So please do go and explore. Um, some business center uh, resources, as I always go through, um, we have our we have our two pages, www.trimble.com slash TBC. It's our geospatial site and then our construction site, uh, construction.trimble.com. <clears throat> we have uh, various YouTube channels that go over uh, workflows and basic button pressing of Trimble Business Center that is there for uh, everybody's uh, knowledge gain for you. So please do go to that. That can be accessed through the uh, Trimble Business Center software on the support tab. We have two sets of uh, Trimble Power Hour um, uh, webinars that we host, this one being the construction one. We also have one for the geospatial one. Um, covering various topics. Sometimes there's some cross between the construction and survey industries where you may find some information important and you would like to learn more about it, please do join. We have our community pages, um, both for geospatial and construction, where you'll find uh, forums and be able to talk to uh, your peers as well as Trimble developers um, about uh, software and workflows. We have our TBC Macros community page. Um, macros are becoming a very big thing out there in the world. We've, we've had a, a presentation based off of those so far. Um, that was about two months ago and we will revisit another one as there's been some great macros that are out. I highly suggest you guys uh, go and explore this. Um, if you're looking to cut hours out of your weekly workflows, this is how you go about doing it. If you'd like to uh, watch this video or many more, we have uh, them all posted within the Trimble library. It's an online platform that you can actually also reach out because it has a forum-based um, uh, aspect to it 
where again, you could be talking to your peers or uh, Trimble personnel as well. So for, for what you guys have seen um, within this video, um, your next steps, contact your local SciTech. Uh, they'll get you set up. If you want to see more or get, or get another demo, um, they will set things up for you. Our next TBC Power Hour is going to be covering Tr Trimble Quantum, which is a um, system that uh, is able to be used for studies, um, bas basically importing in a bunch of data and being able to uh, quantify how much it's going to cost uh, to build a road or um, a, a hall road, such such like that. So please do join us May 13th. Um, we will have our specialist, Adrian Patin, who will be um, presenting. Thank you very much.